so thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the nice introduction. I hope the major role will not be dissatisfied with my uh, Twitter. If you want to just click like just for me and the sake of Italians to get rid of her, that would be nice. Uh, but I don't want you to uh, involve you in my political issue. Thank you to Rob for the introduction. So I'm Italian. I say it all the time before my presentations in English. If your ears are offended in any way by my accent, I'm sorry for that. If you do not understand what I say, please raise the hand at any moment in time. I will repeat it slowly and trying to gesture in a way that you can understand it. Don't stay like that all the time because it's unhealthy. Okay, so I, I, I learned it all the time and unfortunately it doesn't work. So, a couple of words about company. Uh, I work for Procter & Gamble. Many of you may know it. If you don't know it, think about you know, Gillette, Pantene and many other products like Tide and so on. And now you see you know it. Uh, it's a very old company. Very, very, very old company. That is not a typo. It's from 1837 uh, and it's old in all senses. So when you think about an old company, you're talking about Procter & Gamble. And since today I want, I want to talk to you is about data, analytics, and the power of recommendations for winning the battle uh, with that, uh, then you may think about what are you doing there. Well, we are discovering things, so I wanted to share with you uh, about that. We sell things in the fast-moving consumer goods. We cover different categories. So we go from products for the home uh, to the beauty sector, and our product shelf is quite rich. We have more than 140 brands. 20 of them are uh, over 1 billion uh, value, each of them. Uh, and we continuously build new brands in that area. We are recognized to be one of the biggest players in the fast-moving consumer goods. We are located everywhere in the world, including UK, Italy, and so on. You know a lot about myself already. Um, just want to you know, show the picture. It's my two kids. I have two kids at home. It's the only thing I feel really professional about is trying to be a father and failing quite daily. Um, that's also another element that if you want we can talk later about. I have a lot of recommendations there. There's not like AI powered, it's me, myself. I learned to be a learning manager because that's my job every day on the, on the job. So I'm not a learning manager by definition. I studied law. I entered in PNG because my girlfriend of that time was in love for the company and said to me that the best managers ever, they work in that company, so I want to be part of that. And, uh, and I ended to be part of L&D just because I designed the team of L&D in Europe for learning and development in Europe. And the HR leaders of that time say to me, this design you made will never work. So I'm still there. So eventually, maybe it's still not working after 12 years. Uh, but I mean, that's, that's a lot of stuff, so maybe not interesting for you. Uh, so what I want to tell you about is my experience as a learning leader. What I do every day is that I sell learning products. If any of you had the disadventure to work in HR and particularly in learning, you may know it's not so easy to convince somebody who has quite a stubborn, clear idea about what he or she wants his or her people to learn and go there with a product that your fantastic global folks has been designing and buying outside for a million dollars and convince them that that match exists, right? What do you want is exactly what I have. Now, how do we do that? We do that by tailoring it to our customers and by promising them that we will show with numbers and measures that is perfectly fits their needs. And you see that what we do, like we talked about return on investment, we tell them at the end of this adventure we will be able to prove you that really this has been enhancing the performance of your people. They tend to buy it, they tend to say like what, that's interesting, right? So I have somebody in front of me who can really solve my issue, I can prove it. So what does it happen is that our intention is to provide our internal customers some data that are really telling to them that we are doing that stuff. How it ends up anyhow, and I don't know if you have any, any uh, you know, experience with that, is that the data that we bring at the end of the chain is more about they were so happy, it was so engaging. Look at the verbal teams. Some say this was the best experience of my life, <laughs> which it depends from the this is the leader you have in front. I mean, I have some, you know, uh, stubborn and arrogant business leaders from Procter & Gamble. We typically do everything better than anybody else. They know better than me and all of you combined. So they think, what about my data? What about the stuff proving to me that has been improving the stuff that we do every day? Well, you know, it's very difficult to measure stuff in the human resources. You know, you know that. Uh, human resources always have this answer. When you ask them, what's your main metrics that is difficult? 
we have to do with human beings, right? The human beings are difficult to measure unless you don't measure them in tool or you know, in, in weight. So it doesn't make sense. So one of the things that happens is that at the end, while I have a lot of consumer satisfied, so people in the classes dancing and make Zumba and whatever else, they not necessarily have leaders satisfied because I cannot prove to them that I have insights on the learners. So here's the journey. And here is what it happened when I met Filtered. And I want to tell you about this in terms of how I discovered that data can exist and we can have it, and how we can leverage them better. Basically, today, here is what I can really measure. So whatever is something, you know, if you find tomorrow morning in your company, myself as a learning manager trying to sell you something, you know the story I will tell you. This is the reality. This is how the data I have available at PNG today. I know how many people were attending to an event, how many of them were accomplishing a learning item. I know if they were happy or not. Remember the Zumba, that stuff. I know about if the facilitator was good or not. I know stuff like this was the best facilitator of all my life. I know people stopping me in the corridor and telling me, Manto, this presentation was fantastic. And then asking what it was about. Now I don't recall, but it was fantastic. <laughs> um, I know it seems a joke. It happened to me, in fact. Um, then we know, and this is the thing we are really, really, really proud of, we know the feedback of the diet manager pre and post. So we know that before the session, the leader, the manager of the person say, this person has this gap. We know that if I reassess after six months or three months, I can understand if the person fixed the gap, is on the road to fix the gap, or really is the same, okay? In the last case, it's not learning issue, it's the person. Of, of, course, right? I mean, you may understand that. Now, this is what I have to date. Then here's what it happened. We have an issue at PNG at the moment in time, which is that I need to reskill my population. PNG is in a business that is evolving very fast. We have tons of tons of new competitors. Until yesterday, we were looking only to Unilever and L'Oreal. These were like our beasts, like people that we cannot even mention in our office. And that morning happened that everybody was our competitor. Everybody can build a brand, can sell it online, can go in a store, can win at Amazon, and can destroy us. And when I say destroy us, I mean it. I mean, Gillette is the biggest brand in the world for shaving for men. And the reality is that one of our main competitors now is a small producer of US called One Dollar Band, something like that. It's basically the only thing they do is that they deliver the, the stuff at home. They don't do anything else. I mean, they don't have technology. They don't have something like special in the packaging. They don't have something special in the price. Nothing. They deliver stuff at all. And they are seriously attacking us to a point that our competitors bought them, which is another issue. So we have this issue to making a way that our people are really understanding the value of digital modern times, get the skills, upskill themselves, and start producing new and different results. If you need to understand in which way, <clears throat> you may see some areas here in which upskilling our people would change the game. So in e-commerce, by being able to play online in the way our competitors do, in the supply chain, by applying technologies in a way we can save tons of money, we can save in terms of sustainability, and we can really maintain our promise with our customers. So when we talk about Tesco, when we talk about Carrefour, these people, by winning in digital advertising, which is getting every day more complex because it's completely different from the advertising we have done so far, where we are the masters, we consider ourselves to be the inventor of uh, branding and advertising, but the reality is that we are far away from being the best when it comes to be online, which is a completely different language. Security, and this don't, I don't need to comment, and individual productivity. So how do we make in a way our people get the right skills to ensure that they win in these areas by themselves, because I cannot brainwash them and I cannot change all of them. PNG has got 90,000 90, employees. It would be very complex to change all of them to ensure we get the ones who have this you know, digital understanding, and we don't want them, uh, because we say it all the time that people are our best asset. I know every company does, but I mean, we believe in that. So we cannot do that. So we met, um, we met Filtered when we were on this river. The river was the following. We know what we want them to learn in terms of competencies. Good first step. We have a bunch of learning assets, and we think they are magnificent. Then we discover they are not so magnificent, but it's fine. 
We thought they were really, really well done. Master and Aspects Internality crafted them, curated them. Mark will be extremely happy to see how they worked around that without artificial intelligence by making everything you know in their whole hand with no understanding. The only thing that we are missing is that people don't know where to find the stuff. And we have an LMS, just for you who are familiar with human resources, one of the first things a good human resources does is invest millions of dollars to buy an LMS. So a learning management system that ensures that they know who is making what. We have it, it works very well, it's a good platform, and we can track everybody. Just that, people hate to go there. So they don't want to go on the LMS. That's you know, so funny, but I cannot sell it to them. And I can tell to them it will be better tomorrow, but they say, yes, but it sucks today, so I don't want to be there. So how do I make in a way they find engage themselves to be in a place where they will learn and they get to understand what is the right learning they can get? So you know what is the answer, because we are here for their filter came into the game. They explained to us there is a way to ensure that you can recommend what we want to our people based on our competency model. Seems to be working. We were very happy, we launched it. So what did happen is that in October 2018, we reached out 30,000 employees with an email from our CIO, so uh, Javier Polit, and from our HR leader, Tracy Gavroski, saying to them, we created a system, well, filter created a system, to ensure that you can get the right recommendations for your digital upskilling. You go there and you will find an artificial intelligence will suggest in your here really what to learn. They were amazed, and after seven months, we have 13,000 people uh, in, uh, on the platform. So now you may ask, why Manto, you have 30,000 30, email, and then 13,000 only answering? Because PNG is an army, but it's an anarchic army, so it takes a while to convince everybody, and not necessarily they follow the indications, even when they come from the leader. So you need a little bit of time. But we have 13,000 users, and most of them are active, so they really learn on the platform. This was working was working well, we were happy. I thought, honestly, that this was the end of the game. So I've proven that there is a technology that can make smart recommendations to people, and that was the price of the investment we have done. I was very far away from the reality, because what I discovered is that these numbers are not the ones that are driving engagement to my leaders. So if I say to them 13,000 users, the answer is, why not 30,000? Okay. If I say them 8,000 assets completed so far, they say, why not more? Okay. If I say them, well, almost 3,000 hours of learning, they say, hmm, could it be more? Yeah, okay. So it seems that I'm driving dissatisfaction instead of satisfaction. And as you can understand, you know, my uh, final paycheck is, is on debt. So basically, I have an engagement program myself. My bank calls me every uh, start of the month to remind me I have a mortgage. And they tell to me, Manto, you should make better so that we, you can continue to pay the mortgage to us. So that's my engagement program. It works very well if you want to, if you want to apply it. So here's what I discovered that was more interesting even for my customers. When are your learners willing to make self-learning? Question made to my board. Answer, for sure, on a Friday. Everybody aligned. Then we discover it's not true. They don't want to do it on a Friday. They, most of them, they want to do it on a Tuesday and don't ask me why. We are still trying to understand it. <laughs> what time in the day? Two o'clock. Why? But we still try to understand if they come back from the lunch and they just want to wait, invest some time or something else. Because everybody was betting it was while commuting, in the morning or in the afternoon. It's not true. You may think about Manto is interesting, but it's just a fun information not that much fun information. It's the first time ever that my leaders understand when they need to send an email with something to learn to their people. First time in the history. They never knew that. They always thought that sending a fantastic newsletter on a Friday afternoon was the right thing to do. Doesn't seem to be like that. And I can provide them data for exactly their group of people. So if you are a functional leader at a global level, you want to make a hit, I tell you when to send a newsletter next time. I can start to tell them what are the best sources. So I, I <clears throat> erased some of the names there, just in case there was somebody in the audience. So I, I, <laughs> you will never know what is source one. Um, so these are the providers okay, I have got. You will notice I have many, because we have difficulties to make choice. But these are my providers. Some of them 
are vendors. So these are people I pay for their content. One of them is on the left side of, this, of the chart, which means that in terms of usefulness addressed by our users, so what our users say about usefulness, they may be high or low depending on where you see on the screen. So the highest is the one on the right hand, is a couple of assets from IBM. When it comes about the completion per open, so how does it happen that they click on an asset, they look what it is, how many of them are going to finally say, I accomplished that? Well, the general ratio is one out of three, which is already a great number if I compare it to my LMS. So it, my LMS is much lower. Now, this is one to three is good, but there are items that are like 60% of the time completed, there are items that are 5% of the time completed, which is not good. So I should try to understand why. Now it can happen, and I mean I understand what you're thinking about. Yes, if it's a Coursera course, you will see it in six months completed. I understand it, I get it. But we have only three or four Coursera courses there. The most of the stuff is micro-learning. Micro-learning, if you open today and you don't accomplish in one week, that's maybe an issue, right? So I can understand really who are the best providers and the best assets. Now, this information is immediately applicable because this information can go across business in terms of who are the best vendors, who are the best platforms. I can tell you that we discovered a couple of platforms we were not using at all. They just happened to be there because Filter suggested it to us, some articles there or some videos there, and now we discovered they are very good and they are free versus vendor that we pay. Did I say we pay them a lot? I said it? Okay, now I say it. We pay them a lot. Okay, the same asset is for free somewhere, somewhere else and the users say it's much better. It's an interesting element. It's also an interesting element for curators. Curators can look at this data and can give to me different assets now because I don't want them to look anymore on A source. I want them to look on the B source. And they are very happy because their curation is proven to be much more successful. The completion funnel. Now, you see the aggregation of big data here, so the, the big numbers, if you want, but I can provide it for groups. I can provide it also by the single assets, and also I can collate all the assets by the curator who gave it to me. So I can understand who are the best curators and who are the, 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 the ones who need to improve. Sorry, growth mindset. The ones who need to improve, okay? And this is an interesting element for me as a learning manager. I know who to trust, I know who not to trust. I know, for example, that several times people who are not professional curators are better than the others, which is a funny thing. It happens, in fact, that these numbers prove that some people are not professional curators in PNG and they provide us some of the best assets around. And this is an element for me to understand that sometimes passion and real ability to go through a learning asset and using it is much better than having the badge of, I am an expert of blockchain, I know what is the right thing for you, Manto. Here it is a six months course that will make everybody able to understand blockchain versus somebody who gives me three, three single videos on blockchain that can solve the game for the most of the people, which is exactly what it happened when we have been looking through this data for blockchain. Here's the last one, is the search. The search is interesting because it seems to be just a silly element. We never look for this even in our LMS. I never received the report in my entire life from our LMS about the words that people search. We never thought it was a relevant data. Now that I have it, I can understand why it's relevant. All my functional leaders are looking for this data basically every month, so they check it every month because it tells to them what people are looking for. And if they found that in sales people are looking for Power BI, they are happy. They are not so happy in R&D when they see that very few people look for Knine, for example, or other tools. It means there is an issue. These people should be looking only for that at the moment in time, according to them. Or they are not so happy when they discover that in IT, they look for learning on Azure versus AWS from Amazon. AWS is the choice of PNG, so why are you looking for Azure? I mean, it doesn't make sense, what are you doing? So, <laughs> I, 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 my platform is anonymous, just for you to know. So we implement it in a way we cannot know which users is looking for what. Why, Manto, you answer this, uh, this question was not made to you? Because I get this question every day, basically. Can I know who has been searching for that? No, I cannot. Uh, but we know it, and we can provide better understanding and insights on 
What are you people looking for? We can also say to people how to change it. For example, do you want to people to start looking for this asset instead of this other? So to learn more about this topic instead of another. Something we learn via the data is that we can in fact move people from a way to another. For example, with the title. We are a boring old company. We love title like People Development College. And people think like, gosh, People Development College seems to be something very boring. By making a title like, learn how to be a great manager and shine in front of your people every day, seems to be more clickable, right? A clickbait. That's something you can learn via the data and you can see compar in comparative the same asset with two different uh, titles, it gets very different clicks and very different follow-up. And you can apply it to everything because now you discover what is the right way of putting a title to a learning asset. So when uh, Mark and Rob asked me, what does it change coming from that? So what, what in your experience changed because of you uh, seeing this data and being able to implement uh, them and to represent them to the customer. So the first thing that happened is that in my life it changed that now my customers are chasing me for the data. It never happened before. So typically when I send out the data for l and I have to hope that somebody opens the email. Um, because typically what they are looking for is just if there is an issue. If there is not an issue, they are fine. I mean, they are not interested to know. And that is frustrating because we invest so much in learning. So PNG is a company known to be spending an enormous amount of money on learning and development because we are promotion from within. So we only grow people internally. So for us, learning is, is vital. While now it's the contrary and they wanted to see the data because they want to know the insights and they understand what is the value they can get. The other element they get is that they're starting to be the discussions which are not anymore on the location. There was not enough hair, there was not enough light or that content seems to be old, can we update the picture? Things like that is more about the need. See your, my people searching for that or see my people clicking on that. Can I understand how to move them to make some other stuff because I have this need and we can understand better what they are looking for. And two things that are interesting for me as learning and development and it's happening now is that when I talk with my chief learning officer, we start discussing about the effective performance of our vendors and how to ask them to improve it directly to tell them look in our screen it seems that you are not so uh, so productive versus other other seller of learning can you help me to understand how you want to you know to push that and like we can give them some indication of what we see is not working for example completion or just about not attractive not attractive enough and we can also have a more effective correction internally because we start understanding what people are looking for and now we can track if we are making progress about that. That are the thing that we discovered. It was a side effect, it was not expected, so it was not something that uh, we, we discussed with Filter at the beginning, we wanted uh, from them, but the data are making that effect on us and I think is one of the most interesting part of the journey is really about this, even more than the tool itself that is working very well for us. Uh, I think this element is really giving us an extra value. Is that any question? It's useful. On the platform on Filterit, it's a very simple thing. When they say they accomplished an item, they have choices to tell us if it was relevant, if it was not relevant, if they knew it already. And these three elements, despite of my team trying to change them over a lot of times and me helping filter to maintain them, in reality give you a lot of good insights, which is, if it's useful, is a definition by itself. I can tell that at the moment in time, 79% of the assets on the platform on average are considered to be useful by our user, which is not bad, it's good. Then I have 11% or 12%, depending on the time, they are considered to be neither relevant or irrelevant, just they knew it already. Which is anyhow a good thing, because if they knew it already, it means it's already in the radar screen, so it was not that far away from what they should learn, but not necessarily is what I wanted, because I wanted them to discover the unknown, considering what Mark said. So I may be intentional to change them or to find something similar. Then there is a 9% typically of staff that is something that they consider not good. So something they consider not useful. Now, this not useful can be changed because the platform is adaptive, so you can change stuff over time. 
That's the way we are considering usefulness at the moment in time. It's not about, oh, these items are driving the higher performance. I'm not doing that analysis yet, also because I launched the platform seven months ago. It would be difficult to imagine that. Does it answer? Thank you, Matt, sir. Thank you very much.